why do I need a humanoid robot to wash dishes if I have a dishwasher? Kindergartens are much better than universities. Hello everyone and welcome to an exciting episode of Am I Creative Enough? Today we have with us a young mind, an innovator, a creator who has been working across most of the disciplines of the life like physics, chemistry, biology, and especially with AI and mathematics. So we have with us Master Rehan Zargar. Hello Rehan, how are you today? I'm doing all right. Great, good to know that. Yeah. I've been hearing about a prototype that you've been working on. Could you please tell yeah, us something about that? I, I'm really fascinated by God's creation. I'm very fascinated by animals, plants and all. And I really like the way they move. I've got my idea that everything is art. Nothing is a discipline. So that is what I consider robotics and AI. Now, uh, I would just scratch the surface. What robotics is, is you're playing around with stuff, you're learning from the environment, you're applying it, some kind of a bioengineering, you must say. And what you're doing is you're trying to solve problems or just for the fun of it. This helps me learn a lot and that I'm interested in mathematics. It really helps me to learn about the angles and I also study the trigonometry of how their legs move. And you can say I'm really fascinated by legs. And that is why I have been working on a prototype of making an animal. And that has a lot of possibilities. You see that it is programmable and uh, the joy that you get when you hear that something is programmable. You can make it do whatever you want. Uh, you can just make it play with you or go to an adventurous mission and all and that is why I'm working on that. The art of mathematics, uh, most, people are, uh, most people are yeah, afraid of. Yeah, that is the problem. Uh, that is what I do not like in society. Actually, what people do is all these subjects, they, they just get scared of it. It just is sculpted by the literature of the time. By literature, I mean movies, I mean books. Right. Like, uh, if... Uh, when my father was my age, he would not like the word robot because at his time, what robots would do in cartoon shows and all, they would be big brutes taking over humanity. And then when I grew up, I did not see brutes, but I saw Wall-E, a real cute robot, and that inspired me. And I believe that robotics is, you, you see, we always find excuses for making things. The other thing that I do not like about society, we, whenever we get an idea, then we think, how will we pay for it? Or do we get any profit? What about the money? I really hate that thing. But then people like me who are trying to create, yeah, innovate things, they just come up with excuses. Like I make a humanoid robot. Why do I need a humanoid robot to wash dishes if I have a dishwasher? You say that it can do a lot of stuff, but I, people just make it for the fun of it, just because they can. Yeah, they explore it and then they see human humans' arms work like this and their legs work like this. And we need money for making this. We need to show our creativity. That is the thing with art. You can make anything into art and everything is art. I would not say that AI and robotics are not dangerous. Jeffrey Hinton, who was called the godfather of AI, was once asked what are the dangers, possible dangers of AI. And he said a very funny thing. Does humanity even know what they're doing? Yeah, and that frightened me. And then I watched an another movie, like I'm really inspired by literature, and that has flown into my creativity as well. So, you know, when you do this when you put your words in uh, in a film of technical stuff you're doing that so the common mass do not understand what you're saying i really hate that i just want everybody to listen to me if you talk about ai it is a really ancient thought actually what people were trying to be is that they wanted to know everything they wanted to do everything perfectly but humans are not perfect and humans should not be perfect because they have got much more to offer right you know uh, how humans evolve. First there was hunting gathering, all they had to do was survive. Then there was 
agriculture and now what they were doing they were trying to find excuses to portray their art first were the potters right. they started to make pots and their excuse was it just store stuff but actually they were showing their art in that and then came the carpenters first they started to make blows and then they started to make beautiful stuff things. just for the excuse that it can carry things and that is how it has always been working that is how art has been working and i i really respect the artist and i would call myself an artist too in that manner and uh, i guess that is how humanity evolves so your basic idea of creativity is being an artist right? yeah now that you've talked about wall e could you please tell us something about it and i've heard a word from yeah. you that is raspberry pi i just i'm very fascinated by the word yeah. i just wanted to know what exactly I, it is yeah it gives me so much joy when i hear the word programmable you know uh, the first programmable robot not the programmable robot the first autonomous robot that could learn by itself was shaky and i really like the name uh, what you can do with programmable robots is that you can make anything programmable actually microcontrollers are like a canvas you can do anything with that and raspberry pi is such a good foundation because uh, it is like a small computer if you look at the latest model raspberry pi 5 and then you can make games or you can make uh, anything that you want you can make a whole brute robot who will take over humanity or you can make a cute wally who just helps you around or plays with you or you can make a software of your own your own computer system just like windows so possibilities are infinite with this that is why i like raspberry pi basically this is a programming language kind of a thing or not exactly a programming language okay it is a programmable computer okay. now it what can be better than that maybe a brain we can call it not exactly a brain but you you, you can say it's like a hollow brain and you can put stuff into it Okay great. and you can yeah create your own brain it some, all depends some, on your own yeah. creativity and your artistic skills yes, that, exactly that is why done. i like the raspberry pi foundation now th the only difference between humans uh, what my ideology of humans is that uh, when we needed to do hunting and gathering our bodies were different we had evolved for hunting and ga gathering and after agriculture was invented the greatest invention of humanity Human. after that we started to lean towards creativity our actual divine gift from god okay. yeah and then we started to use uh, that creativity i think of humanity as it evolves that it will just be like a small box and there will be a brain brain into it that's all that human is and it just has to think because it does not have any priorities or it does not have any responsibilities right but all it does is wonders and i guess if i were to go to heaven that is what i'll do there this wonder and lure more into god's creation because that's so beautiful great okay let's move ahead from ai we would talk about your literature thing mm -hmm. one of your stuffs got published in a magazine yeah. from oxford university not not exactly a magazine okay. it is in their website mathematics is such a beautiful subject smart work rather than hard yeah work. some say that when we grow up we are not going to study maths because maths is not going to leave them alone and uh, i promise it's going to be hard for them uh, the way we should teach math is really different from what it is right now what i did was i really like the anime naruto and i was okay. really fascinated the way his group and he runs and then i thought was it really worth it like making your arms lean backwards and all that was so tiring actually and then i said obviously i am not a supercar or something because uh, uh, the speed that naruto runs is faster than the best supercars we have ever had and obviously i don't have that much energy but in the real sense is it worth it to uh, to run like naruto because whenever i did that i made a fool out of myself so i did study it and it had some advantages so i was just happy that maybe it is because of the air displacement and all but after all the first thing that came to my mind it was tiring and that was the point i did measure uh, how the real sprinting is better than naruto run and that did disappoint me a little then when i was bored i was just looking at the ninja stars that naruto uses 
And then I did a very nerdy thing. Okay. I just put some formulas into it and I did, uh, you know, there is how balls move when you throw it in a parabolic arc. <coughs> I exactly. measured how exactly can you throw a shuriken so it does hit the target exactly. Because it's not exactly like a ball, it's like a disc. It's like a disc, more so like a disc. So how do you do long range attacks and short range attacks? I wouldn't go much into that, but it was really interesting I and I do do it. Because I am a kind of a game developer too, and all of this ability of mine has come from there. Not from mathematics textbooks, it has come from game development. Because it is that I make a problem of my own, and I solve the problem of my own, and then I get a different perspective to look at mathematics. And that is why I love mathematics now. You were talking about your love for games. Anything that you might have worked on? Yeah, actually, people have a very bad perception for games. And I do not think so. Games are a beautiful piece of literature too. And not only literature, a great wonder of where humanity has come to. A great wonder of technology. When I look at games, like one of my favorites is Red Dead Redemption 2. Yeah, yeah, you see you see that the realism they've put in, the, the story and, and the graphics, how the graphics work. And I really like this tangle of technology and creativity and literature. And that is what I am. What role exactly does creativity and innovation play when it comes to AI and robotics? I guess innovation is something that really we don't do. It is what creativity does. Innovation, you get an idea out of nowhere. I don't know how it happens. I don't know how humans got to the moon. I don't know how did they make all the all that stuff. It's just that somebody puts that into your brain. But your job is to refine it. Your job is to put your own touch into it. Right. And that is creativity. And the way you become creative is actually by just being yourself and um, maybe not judging yourself much. And uh, yeah, if you are creative, then you'll be able to do all this stuff. Quantum physics is not that hard. If you just study it in your own way, that is your creativity. Okay. Uh, I, I really like uh, one of the physicists, Richard Feynman. And he used to explain quantum mechanics to a four-year-old and they would get it because of his way of teaching. And I like teaching also because, you know, it's a very wonderful art. Okay, now that you've talked about teaching, what exactly inspires you that maybe one fine day you also can become a teacher or maybe not, or maybe a good innovator? No, everybody is a teacher. Hmm. No matter what you do, you are going to be a teacher. If you become a great artist or a painter, you are going to be a teacher. Or if you become a great innovator, then again you'll be a teacher. What an innovator is, is like he's a really good artist in his own in his own way in his own manner in his own subject i must say like if you've got a physicist he's a great artist of physics and if you've got a painter he's a great artist of uh, his colors right. yes and uh, how teaching should be it should be according to the art of everybody according to their own way of understanding because everybody has got their own way of understanding this uh, Traditional way of teaching, like you've got a classroom and you've got some Go. children that are mindlessly copying notes from the board, that is not called teaching. But what is, is I guess kindergartens are much better than universities in this manner because everybody gets, everybody gets to do their own thing. Right. That is why I like art schools much more than traditional schools because you can do your own thing. And as long as you do your own thing, you will advance from nomadic hunters to agriculturists and as long as we don't have capitalism you can create pots that you want all right great okay one last question i have rayan uh, you seem to be very curious about things what keeps your curiosity going i guess uh, that is also the greatest achievement i have in my life when i started to understand the world now, when I look at nature, then I see the 
greatest artists of the world, the greatest artists of the universe, and I see how beautifully things are put in. That makes me more, more curious about it. And the more curious I get, the more I know I don't know. Mm -hmm. And then I go, get more curious. And that drives my curiosity. That is very good to hear. That is an amazing thing to hear. I have a small rapid fire with you. I just want you to answer in within a second. Okay, physics or AI? You're the best friend. Uh, I would choose physics. Okay, why do you choose physics? Because actually in, in every manner, uh, physics is the understanding of the world, the thing that I like the most. And AI is, after all, I would call it a branch of computer science, logical thinking, and that comes to mathematics. So they are all related, but physics is more closer to my heart. That is why I chose it. Okay. Uh, one gadget you cannot live without. I can easily live without every gadget of the world, but I cannot live without nature. Writing or coding? Writing. Okay, great. Coding is nothing but just putting your stuff into that ball. But thinking is writing. Okay, what is that one superpower you would want to have one day? I have got it. Okay, okay. That is curiosity. Okay, Ryan. Now tell us about who inspires you the most. Idea of robots, technology, mathematics, all of this stuff is really scary. Why I like Steve Jobs is that he made the mark. He made something that people were scared of. Uh, like computers, they, they were really scary. And he made a friendly computer. And he made a cool computer. And the first thing his computer said was hello. Okay. And that was really hard for it to say that. Uh, I just want the world's technology to be friendly and cool. I want everything to be cool. Why are we overcomplicating things that are so simple to get? Why aren't we just being friendly? Right. That is why I like the idea of, uh, say, people like Steve Jobs better than a professor, somewhat like Albert Einstein. Okay. We have a respect for all the people who have created, who have innovated, and who has given something to the world. To our listeners, keep on thinking, keep on creating, and keep on innovating. This is Haika Kayum signing off from the episode of are you creative enough? Thank you so much.